Welcome back to the Rig Review, and today I'm going to take a look at the Vixen Rig. You can check it out here. I'll put the link in the description, of course, and you can see videos here as well in terms of really fun facial expressions and changes. You can see kind of the range of posing and uh, animation controls that it has, which is awesome. And you flip over and you can see, which I'll go through in the review as well, the different kinds of costumes that she has that you can toggle on and off, which is awesome as well. You can follow the creator here on Twitter. And of course, it's also posted on my Animation Buffet site. And if you have any rigs that you want me to look at, feel free to send me an email. I post a bunch of stuff here, including my reviews, but it's kind of a repository of all kinds of rigs that I can find online. So this is the rig, comes in all gray. As always, go into files and then general editors and then file path editor or however your preferred method is to bring in the textures. But that's what the character looks like. Now let's go straight to here. You have options here. So top, none, you have the sporty one. That's your option here. Then you have the foxy version like that. And then you have the grunge version like that. But you also have bottoms and then you got the sporty one here, so I'm going to go with sporty sporty. That is that. And then you have foxy and foxy. That is this outfit. And then we can go to grunge and grunge. And there you go. And of course, you can totally mix and match. You can have it like that. You can have whatever. I mean, you know, you, you get the idea. Something like that. I'm going to turn it off for the review. But I love this. It's already... Sweet that you can select all of this. You got your main controller here. Channels, fairly easy, nothing there. You have connections on the scales. I'm not sure why, where that is, but it does work. And you can key, and I'm going to key this here, and uh, it keys it all. It's not really a problem at all. So I'm going to figure that one out as well. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. But that's fairly standard. You have that. I, of course, would love if there is another one so you can bring the character down and then you have another secondary control here so you can change the pivot in case that character wants to fly or whatever but that is the only thing on that main controller there is no option here for any proxies but it comes with a proxy rig so you can just reference that in and switch it out if you want now let's go down to the pause i guess huh um you'll see that i have keys here but i'll show you why I actually show you right now why not the keys are there so what's going on on that here, you have the soft IK. And you have that obviously on both. And you can see that one is on and off. So when you go, and this is why I said some keys, it's barely visible in my example here. But when you do this, you can see that this one, this leg here, this one, has soft IK on. So as it goes down, you can see how there are a couple more frames where the leg will extend versus in the regular one, it pops and then stays put. And you can see this here, I'm changing direction, go back up. And then as it comes in again, you can see how there's a slight change in that leg, a bit of a softer intro to that. That's pretty cool. I like it. Managing IK feet uh, and pops is always a bit of a pain. Let me delete those keys here and continue. So going back to the actual foot here, you can of course move it around. You can see that the knee follows. And of course, you can move it out and then you have a stretch option and also stretch volume. That's also very cool. Now, if you rotate this around and you select the pivot here, you can say knee to, let's say, cog. And you can see that nothing happens here. So that go back to knee and you can see that this is what happens there. And since we're there, you also have the knee lock, which is awesome. I love this best thing ever up here. You can rotate and you can see you got your foot roll both ways like that. There's an auto roll pitch, you have a couple options here as well. You can also rotate this way, let's go back down, you can rotate that way and you can also have the bankings all nicely done in one controller. Now, if you don't like that and you want more options, you can select your IK foot pivot visibility and you have all that stuff here. So you got your separate controllers for a bunch of stuff here. I like how this is laid out. So if you want all of that on separate ones, why not? It's more organized. And since we're here, you also have the switch to IKFK, bendy controls on and off. And like I said, the soft IK that we have before. And then the bendies, in case you don't know, it's your bend bows, the bendies, whatever you want to call them. It does all of that for reshaping and silhouette and a bunch of stuff. Very cool. Obviously, left and right is the same thing. And that's pretty much that. Now, if you do take these, you can scale, which I'm always a fan that you can control the scale, ah, except here. 
but sometimes it's neat. Let me see. No, no, <laughs> it's just on these. Well, anything where you can change that, to kind of reshape and remodel for certain shapes. I think that's always pretty cool. Going back up here, you have this controller, which is kind of the uh, the hip shoulder, I guess. But that's all you can do. There's no scale, no rotation, despite the channels here. And let's switch over to the root. Nothing else in the root here. Moves it around. You can see this here. You can rotate and do a bunch of stuff. You can't scale though. Let's go to the hips here. You can move your hips like that. That's a lot of influence there in the middle, which of course you can then use this to move this around and counter if you want to. No scale on this. I was too soon in my scale praise. <laughs> but you can see here, there's some fun squash and stretch enabled in there as well. Then you have your FK spine, so you can select this and do that. And at the same time, you can also take that controller, if I can, there you go, and do this and still adjust things at the same time, which is cool. Or if you have something where you really bend this over, you need to change that line, you can change that box here into this. And you have auto move, auto rotate, auto twist, all that good stuff here. Moving up, you got your shoulders, which are translates here. You also have a shoulder stretch. So if I do this, nothing's happening. Shoulder stretch boop, goes up there. We have the bendies, of course, on the elbows. Then we have that with the elbow lock, which is awesome. I can't say this enough. And of course, the space follow just like before. This is an IK arm. So here you got the same thing. We got your stretch and then you have your stretch on off or not stretch volume. Yes or no. Orient to wrist. Let me go back here. This is one of my favorite things, which really every rig needs to have. So as you move your IK arm, you can see how the wrist stays oriented to the forearm, which is fantastic. And I love it. If you don't want this, you can just switch this around and then it behaves like the typical IK wrist that you can see, which are a pain in the butt and such a sticky point for so many students that either forget or don't take the, the amount of time it's needed to counter, make sure that it doesn't look like an IK wrist. It's just, it's just not very appealing. And I love that this rig has it. That's just a 200% thumbs up. Here's your wrist control. So if you select that, you can translate and have all those options here, but the rotations that don't do anything, you can go here and you have a separate options for all of that. Then we get closer to this. You can select that little bad boy here and you got fists. So you need to quick blocking. It gives you spread, relax and scrunch, which is kind of neat both sides. You can, of course, select this all separately. You have controllers here and you have messily here. Controllers here and scale. Yes, you can. That reminds me of like a Tom and Jerry thing when he gets hit with a hammer and the, the thing was anyway, you got all of this. And of course, back here, this is your IK FK switch and you have bending controls on off and soft IK for the hand as well. So here you have the hand tweak. You can't do anything to translate because it's this here, which is awesome. If this is on the ground or holding on to something, you have that, which is really cool. You also have a scale to scale just the hand here, which here you can. Okay, so you got that's your tweaky options there. That's that, of course, on both sides. Here you have your neck. So this is the main neck control. Then you have your you know shape, change, and switch. You have your squash and stretch volume on and off. So if you take this and I move this up, you can see that when you select that, you have your squash and stretch control like that. And when you select the head and do this, you can see how the lids are changing. I'll show you why later on, but that is that. Again, you have to follow for neck and a bunch of options here, which is always cool. There is no head squash and stretch. I wish there was a, a bottom lower side squash and stretch. And I thought that this is going to be the squash and stretch, but it is not. It is not, no. But you do have this one here. So if you need to do any type of face line of action, you can do it something like this here, right? You can do all kinds of stuff. She gets very annoyed here, watch this. Uh, don't do that. And you can also bring it down and this happens and so on. Some other stuff happened. You can scale the head though if you want. And if you select this here, you can also scale just that section. But again, it's just in the upper part. I don't see anything in the lower section to deform the lower part of the head. Would be cool if that would be added. Now, this is cool here. Now, let me go to the mouth. So you have your jaw control for all of this. Now, if you go to the channels, you have all of these options here. These are the lip corners. You can do a bunch of stuff here. You have the influences, yes or no. Secondary lip control visibility. Look at that. I like how this comes in. 
And then of course you got a bunch of options if I'm able to select it, there you go. So there's a ton you can do here. On top of that, you got this that you can translate and rotate, obviously on both sides, up and down. There you go. But the reason why I'm gonna show you this here, go here, you open that, right? Open the mouth and you can see here, you have teeth controls. But what they do is they move separately. You can tweak things depending on the line of your mouth and everything is really cool. I like this and you got all your separate tongue controls as well. But if you go over here, then you can say side to side curl. And I love that it's on the side, but sometimes it's really difficult to actually access the tongue. So here we have easy ways to quickly animate this. And same thing for the teeth. This is not separately, this is for the whole thing like that. Or if you want to globally move the whole thing like this. I think this is a very cool option. I love it. Can you scale the teeth? Just checking. Yes, you can. <laughs> can you scale the tongue in this? Yes, you can. What about the teeth here? Yes, you can too. Awesome. Now you have this main jaw controller here, but you can take this and you can still rotate this around. Then you have this here, which you can rotate as well. So lots of options. Almost reminds me of like a, the thing creature. Anyway, you have that there. Let's go back and undo all of this. Once I get closer here, you have the side controls for your for that. And of course here, you have a main controller for the corner. So you watch out here for intersections, but you can go pretty far. And you also have that on the smaller scale. So if you need to readjust, same thing here, lots of options here. If you do here, your you have then options to still move this up as well, which is great. Then you got your chi controls like that. You got your auto move yes or no in the channel controls. You can go out here and you got your bigger cheek controls there, upper cheeks, back cheeks, whatever you want to call it. And of course, this is on both sides. Moving to the bigger controller on the nose, you select this and you can see that the whole snout gets to move, no scale down. You take this one and it gets a bit more detailed and as you can guess, as you go forward, more fine tuning, no scale into a little sniffy sniffy. Reminds me of my dog right now. Then the eyes, you got the main socket mover. Move this around, can you scale? Yes, you can, rotate a bunch of stuff. And again, the lids, I'll show you why. It's, it's a lid follow, it's no massive spoiler. You have your blinking here. You also have the lids decrease, yes or no. You can see this here. By the way, just throwing this out there. I have this whole geometry on one and not three. Just in case you're wondering, just for speed reasons. And let's go back here. You have, of course, fine tuning in the eyes, all kinds of fine tuning controllers there. You have that side again to reshape. I love all of this. You might argue, maybe you don't need a squash control because you have all of this. I still would like a squash control, it'd be kind of cool. You have the upper lid. Again, same thing with the crease control. You have the immediate control of the eyes like this, including the highlight with a rotation, which is great. But you can also go here and then A, you can move this around. You can see how the eyelids are following the upper lids. And then you have that here like this. Now, if you go in here, here you have the upper auto lid one or zero or whatever. So if I, for instance, move the head like this, you can see how there's a difference of what the upper lid is doing. Also, when you do this, move this around, it's a bit different. But going back to the eyes, I'm gonna select both here. You have the upper blink, yeah, sorry, so cute. Lower link, uh, lower link, lower blink, of course. And then you have pupil size, Zwing. and iris size. Whoa, exorcist mode. Anyway, you got all of that. Going up here, you got this controller that changes that middle section through there. You can also do some crazy scale if you really want to. And then you have your big overall eyebrow control mover scale, no scale, but you can also just control this side here. Make some nice creasing here in terms of deformations. So that's nice. You also just have that middle section through there, the bigger one to move that side. And like I showed before, this section through there. Super, super cool. Moving up to the ears, you can select these of course and go rant, 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 rant. You got your ears there. Can you scale? Oh, yes, you can. You can do like some, uh, what is it, like a sand, sand mouse or something? I can't remember. I should know. I don't know. Make them also tiny if you want. Or no ears. 
if I don't even want to. <laughs> then let's go back here. We have the tail. So this, you have a tail switch. So in here, you, can, you can't really do anything. This is just for the controller. But if you select this, you have the hip space, world space on off, secondary control on off. You can see it is here. And then FK dynamic on off or not, which is cool. Now these here, if you select the upper ones, I think I selected all of them. You can of course move this in FK fashion. And then you can still take these and reshape the tail however you want to. It's super easy, super smooth. I love it. I mean, my posing was smooth, but that's super cool. I really, really love that. So as you can see, a bunch of stuff. It's really neat. I really love the controls. And that just is such a fantastic thing that this IK wrist is doing this. So as you can see, a lot of really cool controls. Very appealing character. Now, how does it perform in terms of speed? I will blend in what my machine is. And let's do a little bit of a jump test. All right. So I did a quick jump here from the sides. You don't want to see any of this side. I'm going to keep it here. Uh, and especially the tail, I kept super simple because I saw this as I showed you here. When you go to this tail controller, you have the FK dynamic on off. So this is just a regular up and down one axis tail animation. And if I turn this on, it starts promising. <laughs> and then this happens. I haven't looked more into it. So I definitely want to check things out. I do like what's happening at the beginning. So interesting to see what's going on. Obviously, you might have to play this at different speeds. Maybe this is at, because uh, I'm playing this at 24. And I just switch it over to every frame. Same thing. So I will look into this, what you can do with that. Let's switch this over back to normal. There's nothing in my downloads uh, from the site that has instructions. So I will ask the creator, but I'm very excited that that's there. So excuse the uh, the mad and simple uh, tail animation. As you can see, this is 24 frames a second, pretty much. There's no playback caching or anything. This is a very light rig. Maybe this serves as a, as a point of uh, comparison, but I'm a big fan. Again, I just use the main controls of everything. No separation of fingers, just all the, the controls that I showed you with the basic scrunching and everything. Obviously, this is still rough, but I like it. I'm a big fan of this rig, I have to say. The only thing that I noticed when I selected the lower neck here and the head at the same time, and now you want to rotate, it doesn't go down. They seem to be in a different axis. That would be great to fix. I like selecting multiple controls at the same time and do a quick blocking uh, like that. So let's keep it like this. I'll do a little bit of a uh, pose test for the thumbnail. One thing that I just noticed in the posing that I, I think I missed. Yeah, you have this control here, which when I showed you with the hips, how much it moves the hips, but you have this one here that just moves the hips like that without moving um, the rest of here. So having to kind of counter doing things like that. Just wanted to mention that I noticed that. And yeah, I, I love it. It's a really sweet rig. I love everything about it. Um, you know, just a little points here and there that I would love in terms of tweaks or fixes or, you know, personal preferences. But overall, it is really cool. Absolutely worth the money. Uh, I highly recommend you check it out. And that will be it for the rig walkthrough and review. Let me know what you think. Always comments are open. Let me know any concerns, requests, any questions about the rig. This is just my current review as of this date. So any uh, rig questions, please go and contact the creator as they will have more information than I do. And that's that for the review. Thank you for watching. If you like this, subscribe so you don't miss any of those uploads. I would love a little like, why not for the algorithm and see how it goes out of from this pose into a jump. <laughs> yeah, kind of. That kind of works. Anyway, I'll leave it at that and I can show you the horrible version from the front. Let's see what's going on here. So, yeah, you can see here, you can move around and this is with anti-aliasing on. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll watch again in the future and I'll say goodbye.